Doc Robin here, High Actualization Zoners. How are you? Happy early new year. Happy last week of the year. I'm so happy to be here with you. I had a great Christmas with my family. We went up to one of the local resorts here in Scottsdale that had 7 million Christmas lights or holiday lights and uh, enjoyed those festivities so much. I think personally, I had the cutest outfit ever for Christmas. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can scroll down in the feed here in the actualization zone and take a look. It's red, it's a red sweater, a red kind of buffalo checked skirt, oh, so cute. Red hat, so cute. Um, just saying. Anyway, welcome, welcome to this week. Can you believe it's the last week of 2022? It's amazing where the time went. Uh, today, as always, I love to do energy updates to let you know kind of what the guides are saying in terms of what the focus is this week, how we can leverage this energy for ourselves. And you know, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. It's Capricorn season. First of all, my birthday is at the beginning of the new year, January 2nd. I'm a New Year's baby, so this is a great time for me. Um, I always think about all those years ago before I was born. I wasn't born yet. And I was still, I was waiting to be born. I was waiting for the new year. I was waiting until it was my appointed time to arrive. And um, so this is a, it's a special time of year. And, and I want to just transmit that first of all to you, that this can be a special time for, of, of year for you as well. I think that there are three major themes this week that the guys wanted me to bring through. And if you don't know how this works, I, of course, I'm an award-winning psychologist, but I'm also an intuitive channel, have been since I was a little kid. And I love to tune in to my non-physical guides um, from the etheric realm to support us, to support me in helping you live your best life, um, live beyond the bounds of where you've come from before and lean into your highest potential so you can self-actualize. So that's how it works. And I already tuned in last night, actually, when I was getting ready for bed, the guides kind of nudged me. I have on my, on my... I have an iPad by my bed that only has my books, my iBooks on it, so I read before bed. And I also have some of the um, Oracle card apps on my on that iPad as well. And the guides kind of nudged me to take a look at the the read for the week, and I wanted to share that with you. So the first, and this is for right now, I want us to use our imagination this week. Imagine what is possible. Imagine what is possible for you. Not pie in the sky, I'm gonna you know, win lotto or something like that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, the possibility, leaning into the field of, of infinite possibilities and tuning into for yourself, what is my highest timeline? What is the best timeline that I could be on for myself, for my family, for my work, for my contributions? And for, most importantly, remember, we're entering the next three years is all around spiritual mastery. So what is the highest and best timeline for my spiritual mastery? Using your imagination. You don't have to literally see the picture of it. In fact, there are a lot of people who can't see the picture of what's possible. So you can actually tune into the feeling of what's possible instead. The feeling could be one of freedom, one of sovereignty, sacred autonomy. It could be one of joy. It could be one of radiance. There are myriad feelings that you can tune into that are in alignment with your imagination, the best of what is possible. So today's a good day to use your imagination, to imagine what's possible and start, if you can't see what's possible, start with the feeling. Start with the feeling of it. All right, so imagination is first. The second one the second theme this week is to stay the course. So many people in this world that we're living in really want instant gratification. I mean, I, I like instant gratification too. I think a lot of us are craving more dopamine. Dopamine gives every time we open up our phones and see that red dot on one of our social media apps, we get a hit of dopamine. It's not a very fulfilling way to receive dopamine, but nonetheless, it does happen. Um, but actually, when it comes to the creative process, to creating the life 
that you're really meant to be living, to live life full out, no holds barred, that kind of life. When you're really living that life, you're going to have a quality of, of determination, of persistence, and of patience. But I'm not talking about patience like waiting around to see what happens. I'm talking about the patience to actually refine the work. The patience to actually do the work to refine yourself in order that you are in full alignment with that highest timeline that we were just talking about. So in staying the course, in maintaining persistence, in spite of outward signs that nothing is changing, this is one of the most challenging things for people who are spiritually intelligent, who are intuitive, like you, like me, is that sometimes we can get a really clear picture, a vivid image of what's meant to come. We can feel it, we can taste it, we can sense it. It feels very, very real to us. And then we open our eyes and we look around and we're like, WTF, just happened. What happened? Where's my stuff? I could see it so clearly in my mind's eye and it's not here. Well, in fact, what happens is that the, the frequencies that we're living in take a little bit longer. There's a little bit of a lag time between your vision and the, the lived reality of it. And we have to understand that we can speed up the process, we can collapse timelines, collapse time and space, certainly that is a masterful thing to do. And those are the, the skills that are required in order to create miracles in your life, to, create, to collapse time and space, in order to manifest things instantaneously. But the patience, the maturity, I'll say, that comes with spiritual mastery has to do with the recognition that when I close my eyes and I can see my future and I can see the best of what is possible and I open up my eyes and it's not there yet, I'm not going to throw a temper tantrum like I'm three and say, where's my stuff? I could see it and now it's not here. What's the deal? What's wrong with me? We're not going to gaslight ourselves. We're going to lean into that infinite field of possibilities and say, what's next? Where do I move next? What's the next aligned action to take in order to bring that vision into full expression in the physical? So there's a, there's a psychological maturity that comes this week and starts to blossom in the next year when it comes to manifesting your greatest hopes, dreams, and desires. We've also grown very tolerant of not getting what we want, by the way. You know, from the time you're a little kid, you get told, just be patient. It's not time yet. And then we cite divine timing as like the, the reason why, well, it's divine timing. Well, guess what? There's no such thing as divine timing. Sorry. <laughs> if that's news to you, I'm sorry. There's no such thing as divine timing. Uh, but there is divine decisions the decision to bring something in. You don't have to hold your horses anymore. You can just move. That's what a spiritually mature person does. She just moves. And she keeps doggedly with determination moving her dream forward. I had the vision of writing a book for a long, long time. A long time. Never happened. I didn't throw a temper tantrum at the universe. Why isn't this happening yet? Well, I hadn't sat down to write the book. I hadn't had the, the sacred discipline to sit down and write the book. All the puzzle pieces weren't in place yet until they were. And then my grad school mentor and I wrote Smart Girls in a pretty short period of time. But I didn't throw a temper tantrum when it didn't appear. I just had to look at what are the things that I'm not doing or the things that I am doing in order to bring that vision into reality. So that's the spiritual maturity that's coming forward. That's the invitation to stay the course, even if by all outward appearances, by all outward appearances, nothing's changing. If you can still see it in your inner vision, there, ha there has to be something, some frequency shift, some perspective change that will start the the ball moving again all right
the last thing that the guides wanted me to share this week is this really fun, fun energy of synchronicity and serendipity. I love it. It's that this is a very fortuitous time. It's a very fortuitous time for us. You know, Carl Jung, the great psychologist, said that synchronicity is a meaningful coincidence. And there are lots of opportunities for us to sort of write off any kind of synchronicities as it was just luck, it was just chance. But I love to call it actually planned happenstance, when you're in the right place at the right time, but you've done the right things in order to get yourself in the right place at the right time. I wasn't just lucky to be invited on Jennifer Longmore's podcast to do 2023 forecasting. I wasn't just lucky. That wasn't just like happenstance. It was about developing relationships. It was about being a clear channel. It was about cultivating my own work and raising my standards for myself and for the people I surround myself with to position myself for the invitation to be on that round table. And shameless plug for that, right? If you haven't listened to those podcasts yet, go ahead and do that. Uh, I posted them in the feed in the actualization zone. Go have a listen. They're wonderful. So many clear channels. All of whom synchronistically or serendipitously were invited to be on these on this podcast. All of whom position themselves for the invitation through the work that they had done through their alignment with their own source, through their alignment with who they're meant to be working with, who they're meant to be serving and who they are. And you can do the same thing. So much of this work right now is an inside job. Very little of it has to do with what's going on externally. In this era of spiritual mastery, we really are becoming the glitch in the matrix full time. <laughs> All right. So that's your, that's your energy report this week. Let me know if that served you. And I do have an announcement. If you can stick around for a few more minutes and, and have a listen. Yesterday, I announced my new, my new program. I'm so excited about it. It's called Becoming the Channel. Becoming the Channel. And it's a private mentoring program, six months of you and me. And I'm going to be teaching you how to channel the highest frequencies how to channel the highest frequencies, how to tune in to the highest frequencies, how to receive the highest frequencies, how to transmit, how to channel those highest frequency energies. And oftentimes people think about channeling as I channel other beings from other dimensions, which certainly I do. You know, you, if you've been around my world for a while, you know, I, I work with the uh, Lemurian High Council. I work with the diamond core of the etheric realm, Magdalene, the Christ consciousness. I channel, I channel a lot of different energies and a lot of my colleagues do as well. But before that, before that, you have to become a clear channel for just high frequencies like wealth consciousness, for example, like joy, like love. So you, you have to learn how to channel the frequencies, I think, before you learn how to channel the beings. And that's what we do during this beautiful one-on-one -on -one program that I've got, Becoming the Channel. There are a couple of different options for that, and it's by, it's by interview and basically application only because I want to make sure that you're the best fit, like that this is actually the program for you. Um, there's plenty of one-on-one -on -one time with me. There's one level of this, the diamond level, to no great surprise, has a, a, an end of the program retreat in Sedona with me and lots of one-on-one -on -one time and then module trainings on how to become a channel. So that's all I want to say about it right now. We've got more information coming out today and throughout the week as we, as we ramp this up. But um, if this is something that is speaking to you, is, if becoming the channel is speaking to you, here's my ask, my invitation. Direct message me. 
and tell me that it's speaking to you. And we can chat about it and see if it's a good fit. There might be something else that's a better fit for you. It may be, um, you know, these investments are, are quite si significant. The diamond level is 25K. Uh, the sapphire level is 18. So there, and the sapphire level I didn't really get into, of course, um, in terms of what's included, but it doesn't have the, the spiritual retreat in Sedona for one thing. Um, but regardless of that, like those higher level investments are not for everybody. And if, but if becoming the channel is something that is resonating with you, reach out to me because there are a couple of other ways that you and I can work together that might be better fits for you right now. So that's what I wanted to share with you about becoming the channel. It's a really special program. I was so excited when it showed up. It was a download that I received about a week and a half or so ago when I was really looking at what is it that I'm stepping into this year in terms of my own spiritual mastery. And really it is. I said this to one of my longtime clients. She's known me literally. She was in my sister's wedding. So she's known me for years and years. And she said, um, I said, you know, I'm going to be coming out with this new program, becoming the channel. I said, I'm, I've really started talking a lot about channeling recently. And she said to me, she's like, yeah, but you've been doing it all along because she's, she's worked with me for so many years. And I, and I really, it's true. Channeling is something that I've done for a long, long time because it's who I am. And finally, this, this beautiful program, Becoming the Channel, has come forward as a direct response, I believe, to my acknowledgement that that's actually who I am, which is an intuitive channel. So... I'm happy to be sharing it with you. And again, I'm looking forward that there are a couple of you who are like, ooh, let's find out more about this. I think this is right for me. I want you to just DM me and we'll have private conversations about it. And um, that's it. I'm going to be back probably tomorrow again, chatting more about it, sharing more information about it. You, If you're on my list, my email list, you'll be receiving emails about it. Uh, if you're on my, if you receive text messages from me, you'll receive a couple of text messages about it as well. So there are a couple of different ways that I'm going to be sharing this information, but mostly I'm just excited to be really inviting this work forward into the world. I think that now more than ever before, as we're entering the era of spiritual mastery, it is so important for us to learn to channel the highest level frequencies because face it, we're all channeling something. You might be channeling fear. You might be channeling worry. You might be channeling anger, frustration, despair. There are all kinds of energies that you channel every single day. And it is time to use those frequencies as invitations to up level, to come up into the realm of the angels, to come up to the realm of joy, to come up to the realm of wealth consciousness. And wealth consciousness, as you know, has to be a part of the, the spiritual mastery conversation. We live in a world that's run on money. Money touches every aspect of our lives. If we ignore the wealth consciousness piece of the puzzle, uh, we're lacking in our spiritual mastery. And so one of the things that this Becoming the Channel program does is teach you how to channel specifically wealth consciousness. How to channel wealth. from all aspects, financial wealth, a wealth of joy, a wealth of abundance, prosperity, all of the things, all of your heart's desires exist in those frequencies. So as you become the channel for those frequencies, everything that is in alignment, in harmonic alignment with those frequencies is available to you. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So listen, I'm looking forward to hearing from you if this is something that you want to learn more about. Not attached, but I know that this is going to fill. And I know that there are, I think, four of you. There's one diamond for sure. I think that there are three sapphires, sapphire levels, that are out there in our, in our community. And I'm looking forward to seeing who you are. Looking forward to working with you. All right, until next time, all my love.